Hi, I'm Mark Weissman. Welcome back to this series of videos on the Feynman Heaviside formula. So, um, last time we discussed Maxwell's equations and solutions, and uh, I've already erased them. And this time I'll talk about some notation and retarded time and variables. So, in the general situation, it can get a little confusing, but this is the notation. And the notation I'm using is not Feynman's, it's from the book by Zangwill. Um, so let's start with this top diagram. Imagine this is space. We're only going to do space. X, Y, obviously Z would be uh, this way out of the board, but I can't draw it and I don't want to draw a 3D diagram. So imagine we have a charge Q that moves along this trajectory, just a general trajectory. At time T, We'll call the position of the, this is the origin, the position of the charged Q we'll call R sub zero T, vector. The observation point will be fixed, except when we take gradient, op, um, gradient operations with respect to position. But basically the observation point is fixed and it's just denoted by R and it's not going to change with time. And then we define this vector from the charge to the point, and this is sort of the confusion that Feynman had where he talks about it, he starts out with one way and then he changes it in volume two, but in this uh, set of videos, the vector r will always point from the charge to the observation point, we'll call that the field point, and as you can see it's just the difference between the r minus r zero t. And we'll also set this equal to r of t, the magnitude of this vector, times the normal vector. So the normal vector is here. Let's say n caret. I'll put a caret above a vector to indicate it's a unit normal vector. And this is a function of time because as the charge moves, you know, then the vector's there and the normal points in a different direction. So the retarded time what we want to do and what all these formulas refer to, the retarded time is we want to find a point on this trajectory where imagine that the charge is like shooting bullets at you and the bullets travel at, let's call them photons, but that's not really what happens, but they travel at the speed of light. So if the charge is here and I'm talking about let's say time zero now it has to emit the photons earlier than time zero to get to me. And it's got to be here such that that time, that distance divided by C is exactly such that it will equal that. So the formula that I'm going to, that you have to have for the retarded time is given TR. I'm going to use a subscript R for all variables that are evaluated at the retarded time. TR is equal to T minus the magnitude of R at TR divided by C. So you can see it's like an implicit equation here. Um, we need to so find the value of, T of TR such that the distance divided by the speed of light added to TR will equal the current time. And there's only one solution and another way to think about the retarded time. Here I've drawn a light cone diagram from special relativity. This is time and this is space. This is the backward light cone. And this is the path of the particle in space-time. So the particle always has to move less than, I mean more than 45 degrees you know, less than 45 degrees with respect to the vertical. It can't go like this because that would be moving faster than the speed of light. This is at the speed of light and this is less than the speed of light. So it's always moving sort of within 45 degrees of vertical. It could go back and forth and everything. But at some point in time it's going to hit the backward light cone. This is here. And that's the retarded time. And that's going to be in the vector, the spatial vector there is going to be the retarded vector. And, um, and you can see it can only hit once because 
it can't do anything like this because it can't go faster than this. this is going backward in time anyway but even if it went like this it can't go over here it would be going faster than the speed of light so we can't have that and obviously it can't do anything like this because then it's going backward in time as well so it only hits this cone once at one place I mean it could hit right there too this is the observation point the, what would be the field point here so that defines our retarded time and now I just want to um, define a few things um, so we have that um, as we've already defined several times R of T is equal to R0 T minus I'm sorry that's not right R minus R0 T and we can also write that as R minus I'm sorry so this is two ways to write that vector R over there and um, if I take a derivative dr dt at time t and here notice I have the same taken with respect to the same time in both places this is equal to minus dr0 dt and we'll call that minus the velocity vector because dr0 dt is just a velocity vector because of the way we've defined it from the charge to the observation point we get a minus sign here and this is also equal to minus c times beta of t okay as I said we've defined the retarded time this way and uh, let me turn around here um, so if I take something like the derivative of r squared with respect to t this is equal to 2 r of t dr of t dt but this is also equal to we can write this in terms of vectors r I'm not always going to put the arguments of the vectors I'll try as often as I can but that so this is equal to 2 r of t dot product dr of t dt which is equal to minus 2 r of t dot c beta of t and I did this because I want to I'll use this formula every now and then dr dt if I divide by 2r here I'm going to get minus r of t dot c beta of t over r of t which is equal to minus n hat dot c beta of t so that's just the result I wanted from there um, let me see if I have any other uh, quick identities that I might need I think that will be it for now and then in the next video we'll um, do a quick derivation of the uh, Leonard Weichard potentials and um, then go on to the uh, fields and the Feynman-Heaviside formula.